Um, yeah, it's, it came out of heartbreak. Um, instead of going to a strip club or drinking with my buddies or a therapist, I wrote about it. Um, I think I was able to be honest and vulnerable only because I didn't think the film would even get made. I mean, the idea of financiers or actors falling over themselves to invest money in a film that's virtually unreleasable in its home country is highly unlikely. But I think I just sort of focused on the script. It was helping me get over this shit anyway. And when I went back to Bombay, which is not a city I've really worked in or an industry I've got too much background in, the city really surprised me. I think people came forward and production companies came forward and actors came forward and people like Shiv who actually have tremendous success working in mainstream cinema um, who looked at this and said, you know what, I identify with this, I think this is something we should get made. And so in a way I was the most cynical person on the team. So every hardship we faced, I've expected it. Every kindness, every gratitude we've received, I've been overwhelmed and surprised by and that's kind of what keeps you going at the end of the day. I cannot believe we're here standing in South by Southwest at Austin when a year ago I didn't even think we would end up completing the film. So I think it's just been one big sort of giant ice cream sundae with many cherries on top. Um, I think as an actor you always look for good content. So that was the first point uh, of uh, a decision making in my head uh, because what happens is that I, I mean, as an actor, you read a lot of scripts, and when Sudhanshu's script came to me, um, I, what really uh, leapt out of the script for me was that it was non, uh, it, they had no, there was no agenda, it wasn't agenda driven, um, there was no political context to it, it was just a simple love story which happened to be about men. And another thing which really interested me about the script was that the, the gender in the script really did not matter, you could literally replace the characters with another gender. Um, and I think that was what was the most interesting uh, thing about the film, that it was so deceivingly simple, yet it had, um, uh, you know, it had a lot of uh, interesting uh, there was a deeper meaning to it. So uh, I had seen Sudhanshu's earlier short film and I knew that this guy can handle, uh, he's pretty technologically savvy, he knows what he's talking about. And I think uh, for me, I always like to work with people who would challenge me as an actor and there was something about Sudhanshu which told me that uh, I would certainly be on my toes and here I am. That, he didn't give me any of those compliments though. I think it was definitely like, I, I was like, oh my God, this giant actor is doing me a favor. I better make sure I do it. I'm act literally just trying to lie in front of everyone so that you can feel better about yourself. <laughs> I'm a director, it's never gonna work. No, we've, we've never done a screening in India. So my mom's never seen it, for example, which is really my target demographic here. But, uh, no, I mean, by example, at festivals we'll get asked, you know, like, are you sure the film will be censored, etc. And by way of example, James Bond wasn't allowed to kiss Monica Bellucci in the last Bond film. So I think, yeah, it's, it's certain that we'll be censored. Um, but the country is also going through tremendous change right now. Uh, there's a new censorship policy they're looking at, new certification. So the thing is, you get to do it once, I want to do it right. So by setting up, uh, you know, screening the film outside of uh, India, um, Estonia, in Poland, in Istanbul, here, Melbourne, Tel Aviv, I think we've been invited to some terrific festivals. We're setting up context for the country. Yeah, and that's, I think, pretty surprising because um, uh, we've been traveling with the film and everyone keeps asking me, uh, what are your thoughts on this film? And literally, I, am, I have not been worried about the film being screened in any other country in the world. And I'm literally freaked out about this film being screened in my own country because only because I just wanted to land on the right foot with the audience and the, and the government and the censor control. So, you know, it's, 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 it's weird. Like the, it's like the third Bourne movie, you know? <laughs> Jason Bourne, when he's in Europe, it's okay. And when he's in London, it's okay. And then he comes home and we're all like, is he gonna screw this up? So I think we're also very possessive about the film. We want it to be presented in the way that it is. It's on, honestly nothing anti-seditious, there's nothing in it. It's just a nice love story, I think, especially with the culture of Bollywood. Indians, we love cinema, we love romance. I think they're gonna have a great time. It's a progressive film for the modern Indian. Um, but, you know, one can never predict what the authorities do. So we just hope they look at us for who we are rather than based preconceived notions on our agendas. We have a backup plan. We're screening the film in his living room. So we would be selling tickets for that special private screening. <laughs> it's a small living room, so four at a time, please. So, what, well, there's a certification board, much like in the US, where actually it's not a government body, it's an independent body that certifies every film. And as long as the independent body does a good job, the government's okay with it. In India, 
we have a certification body that every film is supposed to go through. Now, India, rightly so, is a very complex country with like many communities, many sort of lines of poverty, levels of education. So the wrong film can easily sort of incite the wrong commu right community. You know, it can, it's actually much more complicated. So I applaud them for the amount of work they do because it's, I think, some 1,300 odd films a year. It's really difficult to keep track. But at the same time, the certification body has become a censorship body because they refuse to certify you until you make certain cuts that they think will sort of um, make the film uh, more appropriate for the audience. Some of these ideas are old-fashioned. Some of these ideas are antiquated because we live in the culture of YouTube. I mean, people will see what they want to see. You think anyone's going to not watch Deadpool the way they want to watch Deadpool? I think we can't be stopped. But at the same time, from an official authority point of view, they do have a sort of, they do have a responsibility to look, you know, set a higher standard. And somewhere in there is where the confusion happens. Um, some films get luckier than others. We're hoping we, if we frame the right context and go in the right channels and, you know, do it. The, but that's what we're worried about because we're literally so small that this film can be easily dismissed. I mean, it doesn't have uh, the padding of a huge commercial success in terms of a production house, an actor, a director, there's, everyone's there's can... No, li literally, two of us, we've got two changes of shirts, one backpack, and then yeah. we're here. So I, I think, I think uh, we both, I think, collectively are m most concerned about how this film would be perceived in India. I think we're already seeing a, a great response in terms of the audience, people who are getting to know about the film through the articles, various articles and the kind of clips they've been seeing online. And there's a huge interest from the community back home to actually see this film. Hell but yeah. then again, uh, it, it all depends on the censor board and how... Yeah, and I think it's like baby steps, one thing at a time. I mean, when we started, it was just a script that I didn't think anybody would want to even do. And then we got this amazing production company, Bombay Bullen Film Productions, that stepped forward and said, you know, we're going to get behind this content. To the point where I literally had to take the head out for coffee and go, are you serious? Like, you know, what are you... But that's kind of... Th so I've always... Love has always surprised at, uh, us at every turn. And I think, you know, let's just see what happens. I mean, look, even at the end of the day, we're already so thrilled with where we are. And I think even if it does a little bit to move the needle and encourage other filmmakers who are thinking of telling stories like this to step up. I think that's a huge step in the right direction against this symbolic, oppressive law, that Section 377 we've got in our country that criminalizes sodomy, which is actually really where the main fear comes from, that in a country where it's punishable by life imprisonment to be a homosexual person, will the certification body let this love story go through given it takes place between two men? So I think that's sort of where the dance is, but I think the fact that the film's been made, the fact that the characters have been treated with dignity, it's a huge win for the LGBT community back home that is starved of dignified, realistic representations of their own culture up on the big screen. Um, the film is set, the film is absolutely a very realistic, accurate, voyeuristic sort of uh, photograph of this one particular part of India this upper class artist, a little bit more bohemian, utopian community. It was important to me to set the film in that culture so that the characters have their day in the sun and the film can be about matters of the heart instead of just being restricted to them fighting the government. I think um, I've encountered a you know, tremendous population of uh, gay men in Mumbai who are free and out and living their lives in that sort of society and their, them expressing their sexual orientation, them being comfortable with it, being out with it, is their own act of protest, is their way of normalizing this culture and sort of telling people, look, it's okay. You know what, I get a latte the same way, I put my pack of sugar the same way, I get on the bus the same freaking way, there's no like unicorns like growing out of my, you know, butthole. Like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what, like, uh, but I think that's what it is. I think the more you encounter them, the bigotry sometimes is so accidental and, you know, not unintentional that it washes away the more sort of contact you have with the community. So it's set in that world where maybe the most political thing about the film is how sort of blasé these characters are. But uh, it exists, and it's a beautiful thing it exists, and it'll take a lot, lot longer for it to sort of trickle down into lower income, more traditional, more conservative parts of India, which is unfortunately the majority of India. But uh, again, I think, you know, films like Love will help sort of just nudge it along. Yeah.